Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. It's Heather Shaw. You're listening to Heather Shaw is Kidding. I hope your week's been going good. My week has been going great. Tony the Tiger, baby. Kellogg's. Eat it for dinner, huh? Uh, my week's been going great. It's been a lot going on. Um, we've got uh, exciting stuff about our, our very own P. Diddler. You've probably heard the news. It's been all over the uh, the media. Well, TikTok, which is what I refer to as the media now. P. Diddler, he's on the lam, baby. Supposedly, he's on the run. Uh, my first episode of this podcast was titled P. Diddler, and it was all about the light accusations that were coming out with Cassie. And now here we are. The feds have raided his house. Things are moving, baby. Shaking, bacon, raping. Uh, before we get into all of this, if you like the show, please subscribe wherever you listen, rate it, leave a review, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Pandora's Box, that cunty Pandora, leave it on her her account, I don't know, where do you, I don't know where you're listening to this on. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, is everything okay? I put this up on YouTube because I figure why not, but I don't, is anybody just sitting there watching my face? Look at this. That was just for the YouTube viewers. That's what I call the P. Diddler. All right. Um, You can also support the show by um, becoming a Patreon member over at patreon.com slash Heather Shaw Comedy. I say it every week for $3 a month. Three fucking dollars a month. You can can sponsor a faggot. Um, And this faggot is doing, you know, comedy work. You know, breaking down pop culture. Burning bridges like I'm a, a Baltimore bridge. <laughs> uh, that bridge that collapsed uh, yesterday. I'm not really going to talk about that, but you know. Uh, yeah, you can become a Patreon member. It's great. Uh, you get a bonus episode of this podcast every week. Um, and uh, there's a good group over there. A lot of, uh, I, I think they're all good people. There might be some psychotic people in there, but you know, that life is boring without the psychotic people, right? We need a P. Diddler to shake it up, to touch Bieber's butt in a weird way. Um, upcoming tour dates. I'll be in Cleveland tomorrow night. Holy shit. I'll be in Cleveland t- tomorrow night, Thursday, at Cleveland Hilarities. If you're in Cleveland, come out. I'll also be um, performing at a gay club called um, Chuckle Fuckers or something. I don't know. No, it's uh, Cocktails. I'll be at Cocktails performing comedy because I don't say no when a gay man hits me up. A large gay man, a bear, emails me and says, hi, would you like to do comedy at cocktails? I say, yes, bitch. Tell me the time. Drop a pin. I'll be there, faggot. Um, Other dates, Indianapolis, St. Louis, Janesville, Wisconsin, San Diego, California. Coming out to you. That date is now um, confirmed. San Diego, D.C., Richmond, Virginia, Greenville, South Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Bentonville, Arkansas. Those are all the upcoming upcoming dates I have for this year. Tickets are at heathershawcomedy.com. Stay gay. All right, let's get into P. Diddler. Top of the top of the news pile for me. Very exciting. Uh, just an all around what the fuck fest. This P. Diddler uh, drama has been. Saw it last night, sitting on the couch watching me some drag race, because I love grown men who wear wigs. I can't get enough of those faggots. I love them. Uh, Looking down on my phone, I see another faggot, allegedly, pop up on my phone. P. Diddler's house has been raided. Holy shit, the feds have raided his house. Uh, Don't really know what's going on. I think it's for sex trafficking, human trafficking, the worst kind of traffic. You know, I'd rather sit in traffic than be trafficked. Um, I think that's what's going on. You know, you're, you're hearing conflicting things. The Homeland Security, uh, Department of Homeland Security, whatever they're fucking called. Uh, they descended upon two of his homes, P. Diddy's homes, and uh, confiscated things, so they say. His two sons, uh, I don't know their names, Pete, you know, Peter and Pete. Let's just say Peter and Pete are his son's names. Um, who knows if they're innocent? I don't know anything about them. I think I honestly think one of their names is Christian, which is just funny. That's just funny to me, you know, to be P. Diddler and be like, name my son Allah. 
Um, they were at home when the raid happened. They were in handcuffs. I think that's just normal procedure. When a house gets raided, they just collect all the people in the house and just kind of handcuff them before, you know, while they can get their shit done. I don't think the sons really went down for anything, but who fucking knows? There's not a lot of information out there other than the fact that P. Diddler was nowhere to be found at those homes. He might have been tipped off. Uh, you know, he's uh, reportedly had gotten on a flight to Antigua. But who knows? Now it's like now reports are coming out that it's like, no, he didn't. There was a there was a flight that was taken to Antigua, but he wasn't on it. Or, you know, now he's under arrest and it just it hasn't come out in the public yet. Um, I'm recording this on Tuesday. So if anything that's come to light in the next 24 hours, I might be behind. Uh, We don't really know where P. Diddler is. We don't know if he's chilling on an island, you know, with Russell Simmons. You know, just uh, hanging out in a cabana, ordering drinks and small children to eat. Whatever they do over there. I would think he'd go somewhere that he couldn't get extradited. uh, Because that's what Russell Simmons has been doing. And I don't really know why. I'm not really up on the Russell Simmons news. Who the fuck is? Um, But apparently he's he's not a good guy. And he's kind of dipped out of the United States. And kind of been hanging real low. And I think he's hanging... Somewhere where he can't be extradited for any crimes. I think Ireland might be a country where you don't get extradited if you're an American. I don't know. I could be making that up. I thought that was a thing. But yeah, we don't know where where P. Diddler is. I think he's, I would have thought he'd fleed, but who knows? Maybe he is under custody. Maybe he's, uh, maybe he's just hanging out at Chuck E. Cheese. You know, have we searched all of the Chuck E. Cheeses in America for P. Diddler? Maybe he's hanging out in the ball pit. He's riding that wall ride that would always break. It would be funny if you would just stumble upon P. Diddy in a Chuck E. Cheese in like Wisconsin and he's riding the wall. Oh man, how'd you guys find me? I love this ride. It's a great view up here. You can see all the kids' asses. Um, I don't know where he is. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where he is. It's very weird. It's it, it, P. Diddler has always been a weird guy, shady. It's coming to light. Things are happening. It's exciting to see somebody like him go down because he's just such an awful person. The writing has been on the wall, and everyone's just kind of turned around and, and looked away or not really paid attention, I guess. They just go, yeah, that's P. Diddy. He goes on Ellen, and he's, uh, you know, he has so- bad songs, and, you know, he was Biggie's best friend, and he's just P. Diddy. But uh, it's coming out that he's a real creep. We should have known this. The way he acted around Justin Bieber was not normal. The way he acted with Usher, which is a little bit more buried. Not many people have a lot of photo evidence of of him and Usher. I think him and Bieber is a lot more photo evidence because, you know, Bieber popped off at a time when, you know, cell phone, social media was all around. (sighs) He's a creep, man. Who knows what he did with Bieber? Uh, I mean, he's a 40-year-old guy that was, you know, hanging out with a 15-year-old kid. And I don't think it's just because he saw Justin Bieber as a cash cow. Because, of course, there's, there's, people want to prey on cash cows. You have a 15-year-old pop sensation who's, who's, you know, a cash cow. He can make a shit ton of money for adults that are all around him. So that's one reason you want to get in the good graces of a little teen. But, uh, you know, Diddy was a little creepy with him. You know, partying with him and uh, having him over at his house for sleepovers. That's not normal, is it? You know, what if, if any grown man is asking your child to sleep over at their house, hey, parents, maybe we say no. Where the fuck are the parents? Are they just so in love with the idea of being rich forever that they just are like, yeah, touch my son's asshole. I don't care. How much money for it? It's really gross. I don't think, I guess, you know, you want, if your child is going to be a star, you have to lose all of your morals and ethics. There's very few people that have morals and ethics that have famous kids. I think Hillary Duff kind of made it out. Hillary Duff seems normal, you know, but Bieber, he's been through, he's had addiction. He's married to a, a Baldwin, if that says anything. He's not healthy. He's not in a good mental state. He's married to a Baldwin and not even like a successful one. He's married to a Haley Baldwin. He's not doing okay. What does she do? She has makeup? Is that what her thing is? I mean, I'm not saying she has to be a great singer or actress, but can she do something? I don't I don't get that.
Is that a, is that a visa marriage? What is that about? I don't know if we'll ever find that out. He seems to hate her too. Like every time you see videos of Justin Bieber and Haley Baldwin walking around together, it's like, you know, he it's like he's stuck with some fan they can't get rid of, like his annoying younger sister. It's very weird, those vibes. But, you know, he's going to be a traumatized guy. He's uh, He's been preyed upon. He was leeched off of by adults, His you know, since he was a tween. He's going to be a fucked up guy. I'm surprised he's not mainlining heroin in between his toes every night. Maybe he is, you know. I wouldn't fault him for it. Um, he he kind of had a douchey, you know, uh, adolescence. Wouldn't you be a douche? You know, you're rich. Nobody tells you no. Everybody's touching your asshole. You know, everyone's fondling your balls. You know, you'd probably have an addiction too. I, it, it, we'll see if he says anything. I don't think he will. I don't think Justin Bieber's at fault for anything either. I don't, I mean, I hear some people on TikTok being like, and Justin Bieber, you're next. It's like, next for what? He's been through enough. Leave him alone. I don't think he was doing anything bad. I saw somebody on TikTok. I posted about this, uh, this whole P. Diddler thing. And the first comment I saw under my post, somebody somebody called him Flea Diddy. I mean, TikTok is the best. We've got the best nicknames for these celebrities now. Flea Diddy. P. Diddy. Flea Diddy. P. Diddler. You just, you gotta be wary of any grown adult who willingly wants to be around children or teens or tweens. I, I kind of started a shit fire on uh, social media this last week because I may have suggested that Mr. Rogers is kind of kind of gives me the creeps. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know he's probably just like a religious nice guy. Even then, ugh. if if anybody is like, yeah, this guy's just a religious nice guy. I'm like, what? Who? Who? Who did he touch? Who did he touch? And which gays does he want to burn in hell? Um, I know Mr. Rogers is probably not a creep. He probably just really wanted to help children and put his hands in puppets and, you know, why, why does he want to be my neighbor so bad? That's my question. Why does Mr. Rogers want to be my neighbor so fucking bad? Why is he always undressing while singing to me? What is this? I remember being like eight years old watching him and being like, what the fuck is this? Can we put the wire back on? What the fuck is Mr. Rogers? Why is he always taking off his sweatshirt while he's lullabying me? I hate it. The puppets were all creepy. 70s, 80s puppets. I, I'm out. I, I know he's probably done. He, he was a good guy. I'm sure of it. Nothing's come to light. I'm an evil bitch for, for even suggesting that Fred Rogers maybe is a creep. Uh, in, on paper, he's a creep. But I think in reality, he's a nice guy who just, you know, wanted to, you know, the kids are the future or whatever. I get it. But on paper, if you go, yeah, here's this here's this 40-year-old man who is pleading kids to be his neighbor, and also he, he like, takes his shoes off and his sweater off and plays with puppets, I'd be like, get that pedophile the fuck away from my house. But whatever, I'm sure he's, he's fine in real life. It's fine. It's also like Drake and Millie. Drake and Millie Bobby Brown. Millie Bobby Brown, is that her name? Millie Brown Bobby? What's her fucking name? The Stranger Things girl. Uh, Drake, Drake, she was bragging at like 16 years old that Drake was texting her because she's six, she was like 16 years old. She had, she has no idea what the implications of that. She just is like, oh my God, this huge fucking rapper texts me and talks to me and mentors me about boys and like no one batted an eye at that. When that first came out, when she said that, that's a real legit headline. That's a real story. You can look it up. You can Google it. Um, she was, you know, a little teen talking about how cool it was that this fucking huge famous rapper who was like 20 years older than her was texting her about boys. And no one was like, that's a little creepy. Everyone's like, well, that's Drake is such a nice guy for mentoring that child. That is so sweet. Taking time out of his day to text a teenage girl. Oh, my God. A cute. I bet he helped her with her period, too. Huh? I bet he, I bet he showed her how to put that tampon in. I bet he did all of that. I mean, it's weird. It's creepy. And, and everybody just kind of looks past it. It's very odd. Who knows though? I mean, uh, we'll see what comes of P. Diddler. We'll see what comes of, uh, all of that. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be very interesting. I can't wait to find out. I mean, who even knows 
what uh, was happening with the with the raid or anything with that. Um, but I don't know. And, and we'll see what happens with Drake. Drake's kind of, you know, is he just is he just going to be free from it all? You know, who knows? And that brings me into Quiet on Set. Quiet on Set was a uh, that was a documentary that came out about Nickelodeon. Um, that I, honestly, I didn't know what Quiet on Set was about. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I thought uh, Quiet on Set was just a sequel to A Quiet Place. I was like, what? Now they're all just you know. They can't talk on the movie set. This is ridiculous. I don't need to see John Krasinski and Emily Blunt running around whispering, sign languaging at each other again. Um, I, I guess a quiet, a quiet on set was actually just a Nickelodeon documentary, so I was wrong. Nickelodeon docu- documentary about Dan Schneider. I'm kind of over it. I don't mean to be, um, you know, I don't mean to be dismissive, but I don't give a. F- I mean, I've we've heard this shit. We see Amanda Bynes. We know we know what's happened. I mean, it's good for people, I guess, that have no idea who are just not exposed to it. I mean, I've just been I've known about it for decades. There's been there's been whispers and rumors. And if you're kind of even a little tapped into pop culture, you're aware of it. Dan Schneider's a fucking creep. He, you know, he's a showrunner. Again, it goes back to why does a man want to be a showrunner and write shows and work with children? This is why it's weird. Because, you know, maybe Mr. Rogers is the one guy who it's okay with. But, like, for the most part, why does any man want to be doing this for a living? That's a red flag. If you meet a man and he goes, yeah, my dream is to write TV shows and work with children. Run. Call the cops and run. What are we doing? I didn't watch the documentary. I can, I can, I can, I know what's, what that's about, right? It's going to be child stars explaining how they were you know touched in the bad places drake bell understandable sucks it's gonna be yeah dan schneider was awful and kind of a creep and oh my god uh, but nothing really is gonna happen to dan schneider you know why because there were a million other people behind dan schneider that approved all these episodes going out think of it all the scripts that he that got approved the production got approved behind the scenes all approved you know every, all these episodes aired everything was approved you know, so if Dan Schneider goes down, you got to take down everybody around him. It's just not going to happen. And then, of course, you also probably have a bunch of parents who, you know, get on camera and go like, oh, this is, I just can't believe that this happened to my child who I would drive around to five million auditions every single day in L.A. because I'm unemployed and I was just living vicariously through my child, hoping they'd become a huge child star so I could leech off of them and take all their money and just walk around in clubs and say, do you know who I am? I'm Diane's mother. Diane, she plays a cat on the new Nickelodeon show, Just Cats. I mean, I don't give a fuck about the child star parents. I don't think any of them are innocent. Um, they may be dumb, but they turned a, they turned a blind eye. They turned around. They didn't they didn't pay attention to it. They didn't give a fuck. Um, you know, they got to say that their kids on a Nickelodeon show. These are these are broken people. If you're a person who who is shoving your child, I mean, sure, some children say, "Mommy, I want to be." Um, an actress. But uh, for the most part, you got to keep them in reality. And also, why would you want that for your fucking kid? The industry is disgusting. Um, so any, per- any parent that's, that's in- enabling this is just sucks anyway. So I don't care what they have to say. I think they're kind of guilty. It just goes back to mommy vloggers. Mommy vloggers are the same thing. It's like, you're disgusting. I don't care what your reasoning is for why you're a mommy vlogger, I will always think you're an evil piece of shit. Protect your children. Protect your fucking children. So I didn't, I didn't see the documentary. Um, I can only guess what all of that is about. I'm sure that's pretty much it. It's parents who are like oh, bewildered that my kid was raped. It's Dan Schneider uh, who will never face any true consequences because I don't know. I, I really don't know if he touched anybody I think it was all suggestive fetishy inappropriate stuff that he was having the the children do and uh, I don't know if that's something that you can convict him on you know can you convict somebody on you know uh, Ariana Grande sucking her own toes because that certainly was a scene in whatever the fuck show she was in I don't know I'm not I mean I'm not I'm not tapped into these shows they're 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 uh I was 
after this. So like I was an adult when all this sh- all these shows were coming out, but even all that was disgusting. You know who I saw was in an all that clip? Um from I think I don't know who was in it. Uh I think it was an all that clip and guess who was the guest star? P Diddy. It all comes together, baby. P Diddy. Hell yeah, there was a scene where a kid was pouring a bucket of chunky milk onto a kid's face when he was laying down. Very pornographic, suggestive shit, you know? Little uh, uh, facial, if you will. And then there's you. the camera pans to P. Diddy just sitting down in a chair, enjoying the view. It all comes together, folks. I know Drake Bell uh, had a lot of... Um, al- he had... He came out with a lot, right, on that documentary. I saw a lot of clips on TikTok. Again, you don't really need to see the documentary. TikTok will cover you. But Drake Bell's had a had a, a rough life. He's had a couple of DUIs, I believe. He's been, you know, accused of domestic violence. I think he's accused of texting with an underage girl. Um, things that'll happen. I think, so he came out and said that he was raped by a show producer or somebody that was working on the show, Brian Peck. Um, you know, and that would explain his, his, uh, life after the show, DUIs, domestic violence, um, him being a victim and then be creating a victim for himself kind of thing. Um, you know, you don't, it's, it's all obvious. You look at Amanda Bynes, you look at Drake Bell, this is what happens, you know? This is what happens when you when when kids are abused by adults. Justin Bieber really is doing really well for considering what he's most likely been through. Let's be real. Uh, but again, who knows if Justin Bieber's sober? But Drake Bell, um, he came out with all that stuff, and uh, good for him. I mean, that's that's got to be healing on some level. Um, I don't know about Josh Peck. He seems a little creepy with it all. I think there's a split between who accepted hush money from Nickelodeon and maybe Disney and who didn't. I uh, read Jeanette McCurdy's book because I just found that interesting. The title is um, I'm Glad My Mom Died. Check out the book. I think you can listen to the audio book on Spotify if you're a premium member. and It's a good book. But she she, uh, rejected their hush money. So at the end of filming with Nickelodeon, at the end of the show she was on, I don't remember what it was called, um... They offered her $300,000 to never speak of her experience while working on the show, working with Nickelodeon. And she she rejected it, which is insane. I can't say that I would reject it. I, I'm sure the same amount, if not more, was offered to Ariana Grande, uh, Josh Peck. Um, who, el- who else? You know, maybe Amanda Bynes, because she hasn't really talked a lot about it. But Amanda Bynes, you know, she talks like she had an, a, lo- a lobotomy. She talks like she's either heavily medicated or had part of her brain drilled out. You know, the 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 brain the part of the brain that would remember all of these things got drilled the fuck out. I mean, she's, you know, it's really sad. It's not something to laugh at, Amanda Bynes, but Jeanette Jeanette did not take the hush money, so she was able to write about her experience in her book. She doesn't refer to Dan Schneider by name in the book. She calls him the creator. Which I think is just her way of avoiding any um, lawsuits, defamation, libel, things like that. I don't really know. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but you know, I would assume she's not naming him by name, uh, just to protect herself a bit. You know, she doesn't want to be. She doesn't want her feet tickled. <laughs> you know, she names Dan Schneider. He'll come after her and start massaging her feet. But you got to think Ariana Grande probably accepted the hush money, um, and she's doing great too. Who knows if anything happened to Ariana, but she's doing great. You know, I mean, she's got a weird track record with the men, but, you know, she's, and also maybe an eating disorder. Okay, maybe she's not doing great. I mean, allegedly. She just looks a little sick, but also she's tiny. I don't want, I love her new album. She's very talented, but she's dating a translucent ginger SpongeBob, and she looks like she weighs 13 pounds. So maybe she's not doing great. I digress. Josh Peck seems to be doing okay. I don't know. I don't really know who Josh Peck is. I know that he used to be fat. That's about all I know about him. I'm proud to say that I'm not up to date with Nickelodeon uh, shows that were after my time. I'm proud to say that I can't tell you the plot of Hannah Montana. 
You know, I'm 36 years old. It'd be real weird if I could just recite what the fuck iCarly is about. What the fuck is iCarly about? I don't know. Glad to not know. Proud to not know. If you are 30, I'll say 30 years and older, and you know what that show's about, you search your history. Pull. We need to search your computers. Maybe 32 and older. I don't really know. All right. We, we're get, it's a lot of pedophile talk up front. Uh, alleged pedophiles. P. Diddler, Dan Schneider. Um, I don't think Drake Bell ever did anything. I think he like texted an, a minor, but like, I don't think he ever got charged with like doing anything to a minor, but like that, that doesn't mean he's innocent. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I mean, I feel bad for Drake Bell, um, but he does seem like a douchebag, but clearly I do feel bad for what he's been through and it's awful and I wish him healing, but he doesn't seem like a good person. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of people who have been abused that that don't um, abuse other people. So I will say that, and then I'll leave it at that. Let's get off the pedophile talk. Oh, my God. Well, bad news for pedophiles in Florida. Bad news for pedophiles in Florida. Ronnie boy, Ronald, Ronald DeSantis, the man who loves high heels and hates drag queens. The man who hates trans people but wears four inches of makeup before he hops on a television screen. He is uh, banning social media for uh, anyone who is 14 years and under in Florida. Um, Now, I don't know if this, I don't know how laws work in Florida. I assume that there are no processes for laws being passed. I just feel like DeSantis just writes something on the back of a receipt for Taco Bell and just passes it to, like, a judge, and they're like, all right, passed. Like, I'm not really sure how Florida laws get passed at all, if they do. But DeSantis has written up this law that bans social media for 14-year-olds and under unless they can get their parents' consent. So this new law would state anybody under the age of 14 cannot join social media, cannot create a social media account, and any accounts that they currently have will be wiped, deleted, Unless they can get parents' consent to join that app. I don't even know how you get... I don't even know how you would prove the parents' consent. I'm not really sure how any of that works. I don't think Ron DeSantis knows how a computer works. Does Ron DeSantis have TikTok? I don't think he should be passing laws about social media until he can post something on his own on even just Facebook. Ron, if you can, if you can just write a Facebook status and then post it, then maybe you can, do, you can, you can pass some laws about it. But until then... And I think that should go for anybody in Congress. You can't ban TikTok until you can post yourself twerking to a hoser song. Okay, Nancy Pelosi? Now, this, this, this law is silly. It's stupid. It's, of course, Ron DeSantis is claiming that he's doing this so that he, he can keep families safe. This is all about protecting children and keeping families safe. Um, but again, nothing about gun laws. We don't care about guns. You know, we want our kids safe off the internet, but if they're in school, uh, you know, wear a bulletproof vest. Good luck. Maybe don't go when the, the, the weird kid gets mad. Maybe call out a sick when he has a weird phrase he says the day before that goes, makes you go, "Mm? is he coming in tomorrow with some, uh, weaponry? Um, these parents don't care anyways. I mean, all the kids can't read. Kids these days, <laughs> I hate to say it, but the kids can't read. They can't write. They can't spell. I don't even know if they can fully spell out their full name. I don't think it's just the pandemic to blame. I think it's No Child Left Behind is really caught up to us where we're just passing every kid. Just just move them on to the next grade. Just move them on, especially in Florida. No Child Left Behind in Florida. You know, I, I mean, you if just show up. Just show the fuck up to class and you'll move on to the next grade. Don't worry about what today's date is. You'll never need to know that. Who needs to add? You'll be fine. The cash register you're going to be working on in 10 years, kid, they're going to add everything for you. So you don't need to know math. The military has got you covered. You don't have to, you don't have any skills. Just show up to school, graduate, and then join the military. Please, dear God. But the parents, I don't think parents are going to give a fuck in Florida. The parents don't give a fuck about kids. And I think that most parents now are millennials and, and, and maybe younger now, right? 
the parents are bad parents. They don't give a fuck about their kids. Their kids can't read, uh, especially if they're a Florida parent. Holy shit. They're, they're hopeless. I mean, a Florida parent is basically just an L.A. parent who takes around their kids. A Florida parent would be an L.A. parent if they lived in L.A. You know what I'm saying? All the L.A. moms who are driving their kids around to 150 auditions a day, the way Jeanette McCurdy was driven around, uh, they would be doing that if they didn't live in Florida. They don't care. They're probably helping their kids set up the social media accounts. They don't give a fuck. This law is not going to prevent anything. They're going to be like, yeah, what do you need? What do you want? Me? You want me to sign you up for Tinder? I got you. Sit down. Let me, whatever, whatever social media account you want, I will get you on if you will leave me the fuck alone. I don't care if you can't read. I will sign you up for Instagram right now. Kids aren't using Instagram, are they? What are they on? TikTok, Pornhub, Grinder, Hinge. What are they on? Twitch? What is Twitch? I thought that was a, an app for people with Parkinson's. I don't know what it is. The kid, the I, the whole parent consent thing is funny because I don't, I really don't know how you prove that. Number one, and number two, as if the parents aren't going to be like, yeah, whatever you want, kid, I'll sign you up for it. I gotta go. Brenda's having a karaoke night, and us con- talking right now is really running into that. I, I'll do whatever you want if you just shut the fuck up and leave me alone. I gotta go. You know, you want a Tinder account? Sit down. Let's do this. You, you're really five four, but we're gonna say you're five eight. All right, that's the only way you're gonna get some pussy. I, you know, Florida is insane. I mean, at least they're, it it seems like they're veering towards what they do in, what is it, um, Arkansas or is it, is it Arkansas that does the whole no porn thing unless you can upload a photo of your ID? I'm surprised DeSantis hasn't done that yet, you know, but Florida without porn is, you know, a church without a priest. You need it, baby. You need it to thrive. You need it to operate. You can't take away the porn in Florida. The, the, the state will just sink into the bottom of the ocean. All right, let's get into ads here. Good luck, Floridians. <coughs> Mouth fart of the episode. <coughs> Double mouth fart of the episode. That one was a queef. Enjoy coffee from Lucy Brown Coffee Bar without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Lucy Brown is now offering coffee subscriptions. Simply fill out the form on their website and get coffee beans from different and exciting roasters sent straight to your door, starting at just $20 a month. That is nothing. What are you, cheap? What, do you have children to feed? No? Then get the fucking coffee, all right? Visit LucyBrownCoffee.com, that's L-U-S-S-I, BrownCoffee.com, and follow the coffee subscription button to get signed up today. If you use the code Heather Shaw is kidding, you'll get 10% off your first fucking order. Get coffee. It gets you going. I love coffee. It makes me productive. Um, I switched out coffee for, I switched out cocaine for coffee. Um, nope. Did it, is that how you say it? I don't know. I had too much coffee today. Lucy Brown Coffee, do it. Don't do cocaine, do coffee. That should be their tagline. Have you ever wondered if you might be autistic? This is for my Funko Pop collectors. I say that every ad read. Have you ever wondered if you might be autistic? Or maybe you were recently diagnosed and now you're trying to understand autism and your place in the autistic community. All very valid things that could have happened. The Other Autism Podcast is here to help. It's a great podcast. Check it out. It's amazing. Each episode, your host, Kristen, brings you interviews with autistic folks who were diagnosed as adults. So no, you know, I was diagnosed when I was three and I've always loved trains. It's, it's just adults that later on in life discovered that they had autism and, and topics uh, revolving around that. You'll hear what it was like for them going undiagnosed for most of their lives and then how they came to terms with their autistic identities later on. Great stuff, interesting stuff. The Other Autism Podcast also covers the latest in autism research and topics at the forefront of autistic culture and scholarship. If you are autistic or wondering if you might be, the Other Autism Podcast helps you feel more informed and less alone. Find the Other Autism Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Is it Pandora's stinky box? Are you listening to podcasts on Pandora's stinky fucking cunt box? You dirty slut. Is anybody listening to Pandora? 
Is that still a thing? It's like Sirius XM. Who's listening to that shit? Howard Stern fans? What the fuck is on Sirius XM? What is Sirius XM? It's like, it's, it's just Spotify? I don't fucking know. Boomers love Sirius XM. When are they going to sponsor the show? Hey, by the way, Cameo reached out to me um, on Instagram. And they said, Heather, hey, uh, are you interested in joining? Uh, can, you you want to get back on Cameo? Now, they're, they got to be real desperate. They're, they're, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. I'm not saying I'm, you know, nothing. But, you know, I'm, I'm a, a comedian. I'm a comedian who looks like another comedian. How many other people did they reach out to before they got to me? You know, but, you know, who was busy? Well, all right, well, the whole, the whole cast of Teen Mom has not, has not responded. Let's hit up Heather Shaw. I don't know who the fuck, you know, the lady who was on season three, episode one of Hoarders, she's not responded. She's probably passed away. Yeah, there was a lot of black mold in her house, but she hasn't responded yet. So let's reach out to Heather Shaw. I don't know. They reached out to me. They said, hey, are you interested in getting back on Cameo? And it wasn't, it was the legit verified account. So it wasn't like somebody just fucking with me. I mean, if they were, that'd be the saddest, the saddest prank ever. And I didn't respond because I was like, you know, whatever. Maybe they're just having a weird, maybe they're just drunk. They're drunk texting, you know, baby, come back, you know. They followed it up a couple days later. Hey, Heather, interested? And I had enough at that point with Cameo. Now, listen, I liked Cameo um, not at all. I didn't like doing Cameo. I think it would be easier if people were just saying, hey, Heather, can you do a Cameo for me? But people were asking me to do Jim Carrey all the time. And, like, it's just soul-sucking. I get I get it. I'm, I got, you know, uh I got a little big on social media because people think I look like Jim Carrey. I totally get it. I'm in on it. But it's soul sucking to have to do like, hey, k- hey, kid, this is not Jim Carrey here. All right, then smoke it. You know, just doing that for, you know, I didn't have that many cameo requests, but it got really soul sucking. So I would maybe go back on it if people were just like, hey, Heather, can you say happy birthday? But even then, it feels so like dance, monkey, dance. Here's five dollars. Dance for me, bitch. It it's it feels very that. So I finally responded. I said, listen, Cameo, listen up here. I will get back on Cameo if you can convince Gypsy Rose to join. And I left it at that. I said, that is my offer. I'll come back on this fucking app, the soul sucking dance monkey app. If you can get goddamn get that fire on the fucking cameo. I need to see Gypsy Rose doing cameos. I say it almost every, this is your Gypsy update. I'm working hard to get Gypsy on cameo. I said, please get her on there. I want to see her tell somebody they have leukemia. I want to see somebody, you know, I want to tell, I want to see her tell somebody that they, they're being fired. Hey, Lisa, this is Gypsy. How are you? So I hope you're sitting down. Burger King would no longer like to employ you. Bomber. You can't just steal fries at every shift, Lisa. I heard Wendy's is hiring. Get that fire, Wendy's. I don't know. Um, I'll come back on Cameo if Gypsy starts doing Cameos. That's my offer to Cameo. And you know what they responded with, which I'm happy for? They just put, they just wrote, a fair trade. It is a fair trade cameo. Thank you for agreeing with me. Um, you know, I don't like I I don't think I've ever bought a cameo for anybody. It's it's very it's very every cameo I've seen by a celebrity that somebody posted, it looks like they have a gun to their head. Or they're just reading the cameo request for the first time on on video. It's really depressing stuff. I don't know anybody that's been happy with a cameo that they've gotten. It's all real host. It just it's a hostage video, you know, from like I don't know some extra in you know the office. You know the fat guy Kevin in the office is like, hey, how you how you doing? Don't ha- happy birthday. Don't spill the chili. This is Kevin from the office. 
I'm one bad day away from strangling and hanging myself. Bye. I don't know. Cameo just seems sad. They must be desperate. They must be losing uh, revenue if they're reaching out to me. Again, I'm not trying to undersell myself, but I'm very realistic. And let's be realistic. I'm not a, I'm not, you know, a, a huge celebrity. I'm not a celebrity at all. So they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. I would, if you have stock in Cameo, I would sell that shit. I'm basically Jim Cramering them into, into hell. There's also a thing going on on TikTok now. Um, I've seen four videos in the past day or two where uh, women are posting, women in New York City are posting TikToks and saying like, they're like frantic and they're out of breath and they're being like, a man just came up to me in the street and just punched me in the fucking face. And like, I've seen four of these videos and all the women have like marks around their eye. They're, they're clearly not lying. Um, it's very weird. I don't know what's going on. There's a man out there that's just socking women in the eyes. You know what I mean? I'm not sure what the fuck that's about. Um, I, if, if you're on TikTok, you, you may get this reference, but I would assume it was the world of t-shirts guy. That guy, holy shit, what a mess. That guy's getting taken advantage of. He's a crazy alcoholic. He doesn't know where he is all the time. I don't remember his his name, to be honest. D- Dan, maybe? No. World of T-shirts. He's a drunk. He's an alcoholic. He's. He, I think he's got a disability. It's very weird and sh- weird shit, but I could see him going up and just socking girls in the face. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's an epidemic. Something's happening in New York City where uh, women are just getting punched in the fucking face and the first thing they do after they get punched in the fucking face, this is how powerful TikTok is, is that's what they do. They don't go to the cops. They don't text their friends. You know, they don't, uh, they don't do it. They pull up TikTok and they make a video about it. It's, it is real though, because I mean, these are, you can see it's genuine react, there's a genuine emotions from these women and they do have a mark on their face. Um, and it's literally just been in the past like day or two. So it seems like this thing is, is commonly occurring all of a sudden. But that speaks to the popularity of TikTok, that a traumatic thing like that, you can get attacked, and the first thing you're going to do is open up TikTok to post about it. That's where we're at. The kids can't read, but they will post about their attacks. We can't take TikTok away. What is going on with that ban? Are they still... I think somebody said, you know, somebody said we have like six or seven months left of it. I'm going to ride it out, man. I'm just going to say the most ungodly shit on there. Just the most unhinged shit. Just start rumors that aren't real. Betty White was a man. I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm going to do some crazy shit. Do we think P. Diddler is hanging out at Chuck E. Cheese? Ride in the wall ride. Do we think P. Diddler is hanging out at Chuck E. Cheese? Ride in the wall ride. Kate Middleton has cancer. Or so they say. Look, I can't get too conspiracy theory about it. Yeah, I, I, I have enough going on in my own life. And then, you know, I, I can't jump into like a rabbit hole of like, is the Kate Middleton cancer announcement real? Because some people are like that video that was posted where Kate Middleton was like, hello, I have cancer. Um, They're saying that was AI. I can't. I can't even delve into that. It's not that I, it could be, nothing surprises me anymore. I mean, if, if five years ago you heard, yeah, they're raiding P. Diddy's house and he's nowhere to be seen for sex trafficking and he probably, you know, butt busted Bieber wide open. I mean, that would sound insane to you, wouldn't it? So I don't let anything, I don't scoff at anything anymore. I mean, flat earth I do, cause that's just insanely dumb. Um, but I really don't scoff at anything. So yeah, maybe the Kate Middleton thing is, is, is not real. I don't, I don't, I just, I'm not gonna give too much energy into it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just believe it. I'm gonna believe that she has cancer. This is a bonding moment for Kate and Charles. They can just bond over chemo treatments. I don't know. I'm gonna believe it because I don't have the energy to look into it or care. And whether or not it's real or not, we're not going to know the truth. You know, it's like the Illuminati. Like, at the end of the day, do you really care? Does this really affect your life in any way? Kate Middleton having cancer or not having cancer, does that affect your day-to-day? 
You still have to get your taxes done, by the way. Whether she has cancer or not, file your goddamn taxes already. So I don't care. Also, I'm just not too compelled by the royal family. I've said it before. What the fuck do they do? They go to charity brunches. They, they, they shake, begrudgingly shake a black person's hand, you know, and they go back home and just have sex with their siblings. I don't know what they're doing over there. I can't get into it. I don't care. All right, before we wrap this up, um, I want to talk about a movie I saw last week that I absolutely adored. Let me tell you, this movie came in at an hour 40, an hour 45 long. That is the perfect amount of time for a fucking movie. Do you understand me? One hour and 45 minutes is the perfect amount for a fucking movie. Beyond the length of this movie, the story was 100% completely original. That we know of wasn't ripped off anybody. 100% completely original. It was not a remake. It was not a stupid fucking Marvel masturbation movie. Uh, it was a just a good, real, fun film. And that film is called Love, Lies, Bleeding. This film stars Kristen Stewart, which usually I wouldn't really <coughs> mouth fart, um, care about Kristen Stewart in a movie. But girl, it's good. Kristen Stewart, Katie O'Brien, uh, Ed Harris, those are the main three actors. It's fucking great. It's a, it's a really good story. It's got everything. It's got drama, suspense, thriller, a little gore, um, a little, a little comedy, not a lot of comedy. It's not super heavy on comedy, but there are some chuckle moments, um, sex, romance. It's a, it's, it's gripping, um, a little sci-fi, um, just an amazing story. Very well done. Music is unreal. The soundtrack to this film is fucking unreal. It's set in the 80s in, I believe, Texas. Um, The main... I'm not going to tell you uh, anything about this movie, really. Don't go into movies knowing a lot. Because don't even watch the trailers anymore. Trailers for movies now will tell you everything that has happened in the fucking movie. I hate it so much. I hate watching trailers. They tell you everything. They tell you the beginning and then, you know, the arc and then, you know, the conflict and then the, you know, how it all comes together in the end. The, con- you know, it's, it's, it's so fucking, I hate trailers. So don't watch any movie trailers if you can. Um, and don't read into movies. Don't read into Love Lies Bleeding. Just go fucking see it. It rips. It's so fucking good. Um, at the very core of the film, Kristen Stewart is a, uh, she runs a gym. Uh, it's in the 80s. Uh, Katie O'Brien is kind of a transient uh, bodybuilder. Uh, they kind of fall for each other, and shit takes off from there. It's not just a love story. It's barely a love story, really. Um, it's fucking good, man. My, my favorite film of the year so far. I know it's only March, but that is number one. Um, and it's not because of the lesbian sex scenes. I don't really care. They weren't that hot. They weren't that great. It kind of. I'm just like whatever. But it, it's very, very fucking good. Um, and again, the music is fucking amazing and it was original, you know, and don't re- don't know anything about it. Just go see it. Like I, I do that with every movie now. I didn't know what Barbie was about before. I didn't read anything. I didn't know what Barbie was about. Turns out it's about Barbie dolls. So who would have, who would have thought that was a joke. Um, but it is fa- fantastic as an A24 film. Of course, those fucking people over there. God, they are like Weinstein without the rape. They are just so good. I love them. All right, that's it for this episode. Uh, Top heavy with the pedophilia. Sorry about that. I'll let you know if anything changes with Cameo. We got to get Gypsy on Cameo. She'll get bored enough one day, huh? Until next time, don't forget to subscribe or you listen, rate, leave a review if you want on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Pandora's sexy, slutty fucking box, bitch. You can support the show and get bonus episodes every week by subscribing to my Patreon. If you just want to support me, if you just want to go, this lady makes me laugh, the least I can do is just become a member of her Patreon for three fucking dollars a month. That's less than coffee, bitch. What are we doing? Uh, you know, get, become a Patreon member. Do what you can. Find me on TikTok while it lasts. Find me on Instagram. And uh, I hope you have a great uh, little rest of your week. Stay gay. See ya. P. Diddler, we're coming for you.